Hello again there folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm the Lone Adventurer and today I'm going to be playing through Dangerous Space. This is part three of my playthrough of this particular game. If you have missed the other parts somehow, you can find a link to part one up in the corner of the screen right about now and you can find links to part one and part two in the description below where you will also find a link through to where you can grab yourself a copy of this game. Now, where are we at? I don't know, possibly close-ish to the end. We have explored three of the five areas of the ESS Oathbound, a derelict ship of some kind, and the only areas that Donzi has got left to um, check out is the loading bay, which contains one of the two data bits our mission is to retrieve those data bits. We've already successfully retrieved the first one. We need to get that one too. And then also the command center, which is the final area that contains the exit and two pesky vigilant hunters, which may cause my demise. So we're going to go into the loading bay next is the plan. We're going to try and sort of do a pincer movement here where we come in this way and this way at the same time, potentially. And the reason why I'm thinking of doing that is because this clever pirate here has two HP points and we have to target them from this side and from this side in order to get rid of that threat. Alternatively, we could use the grenade in order to uh, blow it up entirely from this side. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but I want to get straight into it without too much waffle. So we're going to roll our four dice that we're currently playing with. A one, a one, a three, and a five. Well, we don't need to worry about the evil dice at the moment because we've got no active enemies, at least right now. I think that's probably about to change. So how are we going to do this? Now, remember that... We need a continuous path from the entrance all the way to this data bit. So it either goes this way or it goes this way. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I think it's go time. I think we need to get in there. So if I put the three there, that activates this clever pirate. He uh, wakes up from his slumber, notices us. We are in his dangerous space. He sees an opportunity to shoot us. So we take that dice, that die that we used, and we roll it again. And this time we are hoping to not roll a 4+. plus. If we do, that threat will react and we will take a point of damage. And it's a 6. Obviously it's a 6. So we're taking a point of damage... So we've got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 health to play with. Sounds like a lot, but things could get nasty pretty quickly. So we're going to keep on going this way. I tell you what, I could use that double one. Now, because I've upgraded my grav boots, I can move up to three spaces. So I could go one, two, three, and that puts me very close to being able to shoot that enemy there. However, I could put the one here, which is not going my full distance, but it is going in the clever pirate's dangerous spaces again, so I've got to roll again for reaction. And annoyingly it is a four, which means we're taking another point of damage. That's super annoying. However, now that I've done that, I can use our remaining one to go here and that gets us that grenade and I could use the grenade on this pirate although I'm ever so close now to that side because I'm still not close enough to attack from this side other than with the grenade I could attack with the grenade straight away I think let me check yeah grenades have a range of five so I could easily use the grenade from over there so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to try and finish this threat off quickly. I'm going to move in here as well. Now remember we can do that because we've got the pass key. That's the pass key used. However, again, we're stepping into his dangerous space. 
and this time, thankfully, the threat did not react. All right, let's go again. Now we've got an active threat. If we roll a five or more, then we will be attacked by that threat. That's on the evil dice. Luckily, the evil dice, we rolled a two and a three. We rolled sixes on the other dice. That's good. That's going to be good for attacking. So the question is, do I want to use my grenade? Oh, wait a minute. We should have activated that one as well. Let's start by, from here, since we're there, shooting the clever pirate in the back, as it were. So we're going to use that six to do a point of damage. Do you know what? I'm going to go for speed here. We're going to use the grenade straight away to do the other point of damage and take that threat out. So we've still got an active threat here. However, we're not far off taking that threat down. So if I put a two there, that means I'm stepping into the dangerous space. Now we have taken a point of damage there, which is unfortunate. That's, I'm, I'm being quite unlucky with those reaction rolls, it feels like. Now that we're there, we can have a go at that clever pirate. Clever pirate has a defense of three, which means I can use that three there to hit the clever pirate. I can then use the six to move diagonally up to here into his other uh, into his the back column of dangerous space there. That did not result. I know I'm rolling off screen quite a bit there, apologies. But that did not result in a reaction damage, which is good. All right, so we've used all the dice. Doing quite well here. Feeling pretty good about this room so far. We've, we've dispatched it quite quickly. Yes, we've taken some damage. But I've still got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we've only got one more point of damage to deal in order to completely clear this room. Ugh. Okay, so we have taken uh, the the clever pirate at the start of this round has dealt us a point of damage. So remember, a threat will deal damage to us firstly at the start of the round if we roll more than their attack trigger. And then when we step into their dangerous spaces, based upon their reaction trigger. So a lot of damage. We have taken quite a bit of damage here. However, we can now use this three to finally dispatch that enemy. Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to use the three. I'm going to use the six. You'll see why in a second, probably. And that means the room is clear. And we are now in a situation, once again, where we have no active threats. Right, so those remaining numbers we can use to continue our route to this data bit. Now, while it might feel like this route I've got going on here is closer, we've got a five in that route, so it's going to take up more time. However, I think I will finish it doing this route here. So we can put a two there. We can put a two there. Hang on a second. Wait a moment. I'm not going to put the two there. We're going to put the two there. And then the final three we will put there. So, so far we have got a root here that's going three, two, three, two, one, two, one, one, two, three, three, one, two, one, two. And we're only two spaces away from getting that data bit. When we've got the data bit, we just need to make the dash through here and somehow deal with those enemies. Don't really know how. Or, or form the path and hope that we just manage to crawl over the finish line. Those two are pretty hard though. But let's cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, that's a shame. Well, we've got two that gets us there. <laughs> And then we've got two fours and a five. Okay, well, what we can do is we can uh, finish this route here. So now that I think about it, that stuff I was saying a moment ago about the difference in the maximum dice based for the route, 
completely uh, irrelevant because I'm going to complete this route anyway and incur the time cost because I want to reach that checkpoint which will allow me to do an upgrade because upgrades I think are pretty important and I've been forgetting to use my risk taker no doubt a few of you have been shouting at the screen every time I stepped into that dangerous space I could have been increasing a dice if I wanted to not sure if that would have helped maybe it would have helped and I've got this uh, agility booster which I could use to ignore the five I suppose I might as well so that you can use the agility booster to ignore a single uh, number in a continuous sequential route that you're doing so I'll use that to ignore the five so we still get to do the route through that five all the way to our flag there but then when we are adding on the time we don't need to count the five so we can just have the four as the maximum add that in there we go we've got plenty of time to either die in the final room or make it to the exit and we need to choose an upgrade for getting to that checkpoint now i don't think targeting further away is going to help us i think we could theoretically do this upgrade instead which would allow us to target two further away Oh, and that allows you to blow through a wall. That's interesting. So theoretically, if I go in here and I realise that I'm going to have to try and attack those vigilant hunters, I could blow through the wall here and get to that one a little quicker. That could possibly be important. I'm going to do that. We'll have that upgrade there. That's got an explosive ability. It will allow us to, uh, yeah, blast through a wall, theoretically, and then get at that threat a little bit speedier. Just a little bit of a backup there. Now I've got two fours and a five. I must, of course, not forget about this route here, which is my final uh, sequential path that needs to go to the exit. However, this sequential path here is dependent on this one so the next number is going to have to be a two actually I think I'm not going to put that two there I think I'm going to put it over here just to give me a bit more flexibility now those two fours and fives I think I'm just gonna to have to throw them away and just looking around to see if there's anything useful I could do actually there might be what's that that's a focus booster that allows us to increase or decrease a die value by one that could be handy. I think everything we can get we should grab at this stage. So if I go here with the five, I can then go all the way up here with that four and then down here with the other four and get that. Remember, I could do all of that because I've got those grav boot upgrades that allow me to move up to three, up, down, left or right, and also diagonally um, up to two. So those, hand, those upgrades have come in handy. I've now got myself a nice focus booster that I could use at some point. So no dice wasted, really. Threes, fours, and ones. All right, so I think I should just carry on this route. So we're now successfully going from the start. Three, three, two, two, one, two, three, four four that's great notice that i'm just in the corridor here i have not yet gone into this area so i haven't activated the two vigilant hunters and i've got a one left so i could put the one here and then if i get a two i'll be able to do that and if i get a three i'll be able to go over here and then go up there over two later again a bit of flexibility and we've got a couple of twos. So actually I can just put a two there. And that means we have got the second data bit because we've got a nice sequential path all the way like that. Fantastic. So the mission is successful. All I need to do is get from there to there without being killed. So that's, a, that's one two used. Actually, would it be better to come in this way? If I came in this way, I could quite easily get that health. 
So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 squares away. If we came in this way, we'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So slightly closer and closer to that health. Getting that health could be the thing that means we survive. So let me just double check how the explosive thing works that I upgraded to. Okay, so I can use a die of value five or more to blow a hole in the wall. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use that six to blow a hole in this wall here. Now it doesn't say in the rules whether that hole now counts as part of one of the areas on either side. So I'm inclined to treat it as a corridor, essentially. So a space in between areas. And I can put a four in there. So this is now gonna be my route. I'm now gonna try and draw a line there so I could go ahead and go into that area now, which would activate the two threats using that two. I couldn't put it there, but I could put it there, and then I could fill it in, I could backfill the three later. But I'm tempted to just throw the two away somewhere, pop it over there, and then we'll have a full set of dice, and we'll uh, have a better idea of what we're doing. That is really awful. There's not much I can do with that. Maybe I should go in here guns blazing because the problem with the Vigilant Hunters is they do two damage each and we get an extra evil die when we're in the command area. So you've got three dice and if you roll a four on one of those dice, a four or more, then you take four damage from the Vigilant Hunters, two from each. So that final room is absolutely bonkers. So maybe I should go in there, be a little bit aggressive, and see if I can take out one of those two. Because if I take out one of them, then two damage per turn is not quite as bad, especially if I get that health. So I think that might be my plan. I don't need to worry about time, so I could use those sixes. I could put a six there and a six there, and immediately get that health, which I think could be the key to winning this. Vigilant Hunter's got a defense of four, so I couldn't attack it on this turn. Do you know what, I'm gonna do it. Oops. So I'm gonna use that six, and I'm gonna go in here, straight into that spot, and that is gonna activate this Vigilant Hunter, and it's gonna activate this Vigilant Hunter here. And this Vigilant Hunter has immediately spotted me in the dangerous space, it's gonna react and that will be on a five plus. All right, so we've got a four for that. That is safe. So we're in, we are in the room, it is go time. I'm gonna use the other six there on that diagonal, which is gonna get me that health. So I've now maxed out on health. I think I'm in of a chance here. Assuming I haven't made any mistakes, let me know if I've made any mistakes. We've got lots of health, we have got Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen health going into this room. So I feel pretty good about it. Now the two and the one I can't really use in this this route that I've got going on here. I think I'm gonna carry on my operation. Am I gonna carry on being aggressive? No, let's let's leave that for now. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the two here and the one here, and that gives me a sort of a backup option if this route becomes a disaster zone, because I could put a three there, which would allow me to continue that route there. Sixes, threes, so that six there means that both of them are attacking me, and I'm taking four points of damage, and I should have rolled an extra evil die, not that it matters. And that, interestingly, looks like a bit of a disaster to me. Well. It's not gonna help my roots much. I can certainly put a three there. I think the plan here has got to be attack, 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 probably. So from this point here, from this position here, I can shoot using one of those sixes and do a point of damage. I can then step up here using one of the threes and the threat doesn't react, 
because I only rolled a 3 and they react on a 5 plus. And from there, I can shoot again using the other 6 and do another point of damage. And I think I'm going to do a double diagonal move down to here, which is stepping into that enemy's final little row of dangerous spaces, column of dangerous spaces, meaning I could take a point of damage, but I will be ready to take him down in the next round. Good, no damage taken. Fantastic. Let's do it. Oh, so I'm taking another four points of damage. Let's think carefully about this. I have got a five. I'm going to use the five to carry on this route. I want to keep that route going, don't I? So I'm going to use another six to go there. Another six to go there. This is looking good. Then we can use this four to shoot the Vigilant Hunter. That Vigilant Hunter is now deceased and I've got a three left. There's not too much I can do with a three. Oh look, I did a six and a six. That was a complete fluke, but that gets me this focus booster. I've now got two focus boosters. I could, do you know what, and I'm going to, I'm going to increase this dice to a four using that one, and then I'm going to increase it to a five using that one, and then I'm going to put the five there. And that means I'm only one, two, three squares away from actually winning. So I've rolled a five, which means the clever pirate, sorry, the vigilant hunter, is going to uh, attack. So I'm taking two points of damage. I am down to three points of health remaining. And uh, I think this is it, folks, because I've got a five that I can put there. I've got a four, which I can put there. And then I've got a three, which I can put there. And I think, so when I place that final one, maybe I have to roll to see if the Vigilant Hunter takes one more pot shot at me. It does. But that means I've got to the exit using this continuous path here. And the mission is complete. So we need to mark the time cost of that final route. So the highest value we put in there was six. So I had two health remaining and uh, seven time remaining but because we got to the two data bits and we formed a continuous path to the exit from the entrance it means that Donzi was successful in the mission. There you go I did not expect that to go that smoothly but you can see how tight a game this is it is challenging and the only way really that I succeeded I think was by getting all of that health and using quite a few of the uh, little boosters, making sure I tackled the threats in a methodical way. Yeah, pretty tight, pretty challenging. Hope you enjoyed it. Is this a game you have played? Let me know in the comments below if this is one you've got, if it's in your to-play pile, or if you have picked it up and given it a go already. Have you played any of the other sheets? Does it look like a game you might enjoy? If you enjoyed this and you haven't seen my Dungeon Pages playthrough, I'll pop a link up in the corner of the screen right about now. And thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one, folks. Bye for now.